this week on Clown College. All right, bud, this is funny. So I cover my ears and I'm like, hey, this is great. And the monkey is literally like trying to pull my fingers off of my ear. Mm -hmm. He's like mad that I've covered my ear. And I'm like, this is kind of funny. This is great. You know, and everybody's laughing. We're having a good time at that point. And then the monkey grabs the front of my shirt like this with one hand, puts his feet here. So he's like hanging in front of me, like right here. He's got a hold of my shirt and he's like hanging. And he's just staring at me. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, man, I think you should come get your monkey probably. <laughs> like, this is not fun anymore. And I, I, like, close my eyes. I'm like, hey, man, get your monkey off of me. And the monkey fucking pimp slaps me. Oh, damn. <laughs> and I was like, bam. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, like, Did I get, just get slapped? I should probably kill the monkey right now, you know? And he was like, he slapped He's me. in there like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks for the flashbacks, dude. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that, that the year. one on the right, he's looking dead at me and slapped me multiple times. <laughs> Welcome to Clown College. We have profound knowledge. In many ways, the elevator make it sound polished. So if you want to hear a little honest, a few takes on a ways to make it as a comic. Then stick around for a while to put down the clown. We got the guests right now just to show you how. Let's all go to Clown College, baby. How we sound it? How we sound? Yeah, sound yeah. Good? yeah. Sound right. fresh. Like your haircut, man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just got out You just got out the barber chair. chair. You know I like it. Do y'all play stuff? Oh, yeah, so yeah. I mean sometimes I yeah, do a little do sound effect. You, you don't got have to that. wear it though. You got that. Yeah, you don't have to wear it. And then we got this, but we never use that. We never use that. Use it today. <laughs> use it today. It's too damn long. It's too long. <laughs> nah, he please use it. <laughs> <laughs> Just randomly hit it and we'll go, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Commercial oh. break? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? How y'all doing? Man, I feel good. Are we started? Uh, uh, well, I don't know, but we got a special guest here, don't oh, we? Oh, here we go. We, we do have a very special guest today. And sometimes we say we have a special guest and they really aren't shit, but Damn. this guy. <laughs> like, I know. Yeah, David Lineham. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like special guest. <laughs> I was like, eh. Not that special. <laughs> we got a for real special guest on today. Mm. A fucking local legend. Ooh. You can catch. You can wow. see him on, on productions like... The Tonight Show, God oh, damn. which sounds insane to say. You can catch them every more or every weekday morning on yes. Zimbo yeah. and Casio damn right. in the morning on mm -hmm. Rocket 95.1. Or you could have catched them at Gadsden Community College, man. <laughs> <laughs> any, of, any of those things. Only for a few semesters. We got the yeah. Casio yeah. kid in today. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Get my theme music. Oh, I got you. And we're back. <laughs> In the middle of my intro, we had a commercial break. Okay. Hey, thank you for coming. What's up, thank fellas? You, man. Hey, well, What's man. Up? Thanks for having me, man. This is an honor to be here. Shit, it's an honor for us. You are the first celebrity that we have on here. Mm -hmm. That is true. And we're very Whoa, excited about it. that's sad. <laughs> that I'm a celebrity. <laughs> Dude, you're massive. I told you this before. Like, one of my friends was All like... All right, that's a fat joke. That's the first one. <laughs> Hit that noise again. I got no, 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 no. Oh, this one. Every time there's a fat joke, you I get a fat <laughs> And we're back here at the Clown College podcast. <laughs> That's actually Cassio's yeah. shirt playing that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we got another song, too, right? This is so big, it was made out of real jungle. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. I should do that myself. Hell, yeah. That is I need good. all the help I can get. <laughs> oh, don't, dude. You're a beast to stand up. You are. Well, I think on the first day, uh, the first. Uh, 
showcase I did at Stand Up Live, you were the feature on there. And, man, you blew that fucking crowd back. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. You're a monster, dude. Thank you. Um, not a good writer, but I have fun on stage. You're, it's effortlessly. I'm a you. real yeah. bad comedy writer. What? Like the worst probably ever. No. No, you're not. No. Yeah, anything you've heard me do, I've never wrote down. Really? Really? Yeah. You just come awesome. on. Uh, I've tried to do better in the last couple years with notes, and I'll keep a like a like a headline mm-hmm. or a thing I thought was funny, and then sometimes I go back and look at it and I'm like, well, I don't know what that meant. Uh, I must <laughs> have been nice. inebriated when I typed that in. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, yeah, I'm not the guy that's got notebooks. And I'm keeping like recording stuff, I, and that's also why my career has brought me here to the Clown College <laughs> podcast <laughs> and not somewhere else. But uh, yeah, I just that's not my mindset, man. My mind can't work that way. Mm-hmm. I figured out in high school how to. Uh, I was just intelligent enough to take the test and get a C and pass. So I was like, so I don't have to do homework? This rules. <laughs> yeah, but you need better grades. For what, really, though? Like, for what? You are, we all know I'm not going far or getting a real job. What you am I going to need Brandon. math for? Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, probably. Wait, what do we do? What, 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 <laughs> what, 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 what do we do? Like, what test? Which test? You see? see? <laughs> oh, <that's> the- <laughs> we had 120 people in my graduating class, okay. and I graduated number 60. Hell, oh, hell that's, yeah. See, that's where you want to be. That's exactly where I wanted to be. That that's was the C average, baby. That's the top of the bell curve. Yeah. I was like, cool with the dumb kids, cool with the smart kids. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For the smart kids, I was like the edgy guy. Ooh. Mm-hmm. He got a D on his report card. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bad boy. <laughs> and then for everybody else that I got to see, they were like, my man's smart. Dude, he's got it. He's got it, guys. He's funny and cool, and he's got smarts, too. <laughs> triple threat, dude. Yeah. I was a triple threat. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. So... So you're in radio. I listen to your show every morning uh, from the time I get into work until uh, 10 o'clock with you but and Jimbo. But did you before you knew me? You didn't. I did. No, no, yes. Oh, okay. I did. I Because I, I don't think young people listen to radio. It but, surprises me. Well, I would go radio. to the gym in the morning Okay. up in Ardmore, and they'd be playing it in the morning. I could never figure out how to change a channel. So <laughs> I listen to it He's every like, morning. I'd really like to play my playlist right now. And they got these goobs on the air. I listen to radio, too, but it's like much older. You know, before our time, like in the 30s, I look on YouTube. And then sometimes like GTA radio. And then... Maybe I'll listen to the So, like, you go to YouTube and type in 1930s radio (laughs) and just let a six-hour video play? Sometimes I listen, like, what's that dude's name? He was an old comedian. His name was, uh, what was it, Jack Benny? Yeah. And then he had, what, Mel Blanc. That's what I listen to a lot. (laughs) That's that right? Or the Mel LeBlanc. Let me see. <laughs> he did all the cartoons. Yep, he did Bugs Bunny, uh, yeah. Daffy, Wait, Sly Vester. You're going back to listen to him? <laughs> yeah. Sly Vester. Sly Vester. What's his, how do you say it? Sly Vester? Man, Sly Vester. That, that was a janitor at my high school that got uh. fired for inappropriate behavior. <laughs> was Sly Vester. <laughs> Slyvester the molester. That's what we called him in high school. <laughs> Slyvester. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he brought him up on the screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's It'd be great if he did a million voices and none of them were Sylvester. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his IMDb. I don't see Sylvester. Oh, there he is, top yeah. right. Yeah. Unless he does Tweety, but Gordy. I think that's Sylvester. Oh shit! He did Fred. <laughs> 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 I was watching that last night. <laughs> He's a Jim <gym> cat. <laughs> he is a Jim. Man, I've never made it until some random podcast is looking through my my resume and they go, "Oh shit, he did Fred." <laughs> like, there's only Fred Flintstone and. I don't know. What's Fred Savage? Wonder you. What's yep, another yep. famous Ooh, Fred? Uh, John Cena's see. son, Fred. 
Yeah, no. Fred named Fred. Who the fuck is that? Fred, you never seen the Fred movie? That's a deep no. gut. Oh, oh Fred fuck. Fred yeah, Fred Figglehorn, dude. Man, he's too Produced old. Produced by Dan old. Schneider. Fred, uh. This is in 2011, his prime days, man. 2010, fuck. Close. Wrong now. This is a movie? Oh, man, yes. that Amazing. took no time for us nerds to get to wrestling. I like it. <laughs> Fred, dude, Fred, oh. this is a crazy fact. He was the first person ever to hit a million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. What's yeah. the Fred fuck out of What, is that real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, really? Yeah. He was the guy with the high-pitched voice. That was just mm -hmm. His whole gimmick was just a voice filter that made him sound super high-pitched. Wow. Yeah. He was oh, on iCarly. So, I mean, oh. I remember this, the wrestling aspect of it, but yeah, I didn't know right it was there. a... First million dollar subscriber. That's crazy. Oh, so he was doing this before he made the movie. Yeah, and yeah, that's what got him the movie. Oh, okay. He was the first one of those guys to like do that. Oh, but isn't okay. that genius for both companies? Nobody to give him credit, but that's WWE staying on the pulse of right. what are kids doing? Right. What are? Mm -hmm. If you watch wrestling now, the majority of it, it ain't for us. We're adults. Mm -hmm. It's for kids and teenagers. Because when you think, man, what's the greatest era of your wrestling fandom? Attitude. It ain't now. Mm -mm. No. It's when you were a kid or a teenager. Oh, Ruthless yeah. aggression, mm -hmm. more attitude era, golden era. Right. You, you, were, you were a kid. That, that's exactly who they're marketing yeah. to, which is why they are bigger and better than ever. And all the adults are like, man, that... Y'all don't know what it was like, 97. Guess True. what kids don't care? What it was like in 97. I, but I will say. They go, we got Roman damn Reigns. <laughs> exactly. The greatest champion ever. I mean, really, that's what they think. He was. Yeah. Well, but in our, in our day, we had bra and panty matches. Come on. That was no, for kids. No, our, our era was clearly the best era. <laughs> yeah. but, it was I'm just saying, was the like, best it was, there's no kid born now. Where they've been from five to ten, mm -hmm. and their cha only champion was Roman Reigns. Damn, They're never yeah. going to be like, ah, oh, man, I wish we had Braun panty matches. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dude, they're like, dude, we had matches. Roman Reigns. He yeah. was the champ for five years or whatever. How long he's been? <laughs> I you know what I mean? Like, Let me it's see. a different. It's it a, ain't made for us. Mm -hmm. bro. We don't need We're already Braun panty matches. Yes. Dude. We got to see Seth Rollins' dick. What? On the internet, dude. dude. What? Are for you real? serious, yes, man? Yes, man. Hey, look it up, bro. Let me see. No, <laughs> don't look this shit up. <laughs> I didn't know that was out there. Yeah, I, I didn't some, either. That's when Page I was, that's, was out there. That's what got um, me into wrestling. <laughs> I knew Page <laughs> and Xavier. Oh, nicely done. Yeah. Damn, I knew Page with Xavier Woods oh, was out there. Yeah, I've seen those. Oh yeah, she had all. Uh, it's all on. Caitlin, face. you remember Caitlin too? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Caitlin. Remember Caitlin? Wow, she worked no. at CVS. You <laughs> remember her Caitlin? Man, this is when AJ saw her neck at one time. It's just random. This is more. Y'all you know. remember Sarah at Captain D's? Yeah. <laughs> she used to bring me cracklings to get naked. It was a hot time. Yeah, her when she used to go against AJ Lee a lot. Mm. Yep. No, I don't, but I would oh, like yeah. to. 2014. <laughs> I wish I would. <laughs> what about it, though, Brandon? Oh, yeah. well, uh, back in the day, you know, I was young. She had a porn scene, and I checked it out. She had an actual porn scene? Oh, yeah. She made her own. She walked in like this. Office. Just leave that tab open. I got yeah. you, man. Trust me. <laughs> back in the day. I she had her own porn scene? Yes, yes, she did. She uh, Or what they call it, a leak, but it's all over everything. Now you get on Pornhub, X Hamster. Yeah, I know how a leak works. Um, <laughs> thanks all for telling me that, Brandon. <laughs> He's what like, here's what call? happens when your porn leaks. Now I got it. He goes, we all see it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One night oh, in look. Caitlin. Oh, she did an interview with Bleacher Report. Drugs were involved. That's not good. Well, you know. Wish you're the best. Yeah, right oh, there. Isn't yeah. that every porn, though? Oh, damn. She wants Wanting to her to There's die. Not... Damn. Well, I'm going to tell you this. She's hot. I don't oh, remember yeah. her, but <laughs> she's hot. Yeah, she is hot. I've never heard of her. Shout out to that. Yeah, that I one on, right below that one that she got highlighted. Right here? To the right. Oh, to the right. right <laughs> the one right it's below you had highlighted. It's going to take a I second. Oh, no. Good directions. Brandon said below and went right up. there. Yeah. This, this was like, her prime. Re refresh? <laughs> <laughs> was that at the straight tail speakeasy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looked like it. The I don't remember Caitlin, man. These days. So you you uh do you do wrestling like a podcast with a wrestler? One of the greatest yeah. wrestlers in me and Brandon's. Uh, right. oh, wait here. wait wait, hang on hang on. Oh, okay, so you do know the new one? Yes, All I right, do. nice. Then what you tell us about? I've done a bunch of wrestling podcasts. Yes, currently I have three consistent wrestling podcasts. I have a uh, we just started Papa Shango Godfather. Uh, Papa Shango, whatever you want to call him. Oh my God, that's uh, Charles Papa right. Shango is Godfather. Godfather? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, man. He's that's why he's a Godfather, Godfather dude. 
Fuck oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I just knew him as the Godfather. Get on the road train. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the smoke train. <laughs> um, former owner of the Cheetah Strip Club in Las Vegas. Ooh. Damn. Damn. My man's seen some things. <laughs> he met Undertaker in a biker bar when he was just a biker. What? Yeah. He played football at the University of Nevada, and then he started bouncing at strip clubs in, Cali- uh, in California. Mm-hmm. And uh, through some other things, fast forward, uh, listen to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, he met Undertaker. Uh, you know, Undertaker's a big biker. He's a biker. And uh, they met, and he was like, you should check out wrestling because you look intimidating. He listened to rock music, had a mohawk, had the uh, sleeve tattoo. This is, you know, way before sleeve tattoos are even popular. considered. Like- uh, yeah. So when that guy walks in, you're like, now imagine him with a mohawk. He's about 6'7", um, 300, you know. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a big dude. Big dude. Um, Did he play football or something before that? Find. Played football he at just, University of Nevada. He just said that. That's what I said. Okay, yeah. Yeah, University of Nevada. <laughs> he played, yo guys are never going to believe this. He played football at the University of Nevada. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at him. Hell yeah. yeah uh, he, comma, he came back with the Nation of Domination. Ooh, you remember? Oh, he was, oh, let me do that. Oh, domination. That was when uh, UFC was popping off. When so Nation started. of Domination was uh, Ron Simmons, D'Lo, The Rock eventually mm-hmm. came in there. They brought, oh, there you go that. They brought Kama D-Lo in. D'Lo was in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. D'Lo used to do his head like that. So they would, oh, man, D'Lo's the best, dude. Um, yeah, so he came as Kama like the ultimate fighting machine because UFC was popping off. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh. how can we tie these UFC fans in? So he came in like this. <laughs> yeah. And when he comes in at Solid. six, 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 seven, three hundred, like, yeah, my dude can fight. <laughs> um Yeah, just an incredible career of of somebody who was not into wrestling. And of all people, the Undertaker tells you to get into wrestling. You're like, mm-hmm. Well, he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't at the time, but just like, you know, he was way, way ahead of where he was at the time. Oh. True. So he's like, yeah, okay, you seem cool. We're, we're at the biker bar together, whatever. And he's one of the only people to get uh, Undertaker to break. Yeah. Yeah. You remember yeah. that when he's that's talking about him. the whole, No, wrong one. That's Kamala. That's Kamala. Kamala. He'd be hitting his belly. <laughs> yeah, not Kamala. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know she was in the WWE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Add that to the you resume. Know, I got there you go. <laughs> you know that's Undertaker Iron right there. Yeah, too. so I do once a month. The Godfather just started that. Um, I don't know when this comes out, but the second episode of that will probably drop by the time this is out. I just recorded it, and uh, then every other week I alternate with uh, former wrestling referees. I do uh, a guy that was with WWE his whole career, Mike Kyoto, who um, was The Rock's personal referee. Um, he did a bunch with. He, some of your biggest matches you've ever seen. He was a referee. C H I O D A. I should have let you keep going there to see <laughs> what we would have got. Oh, I have. Yeah, seen there you one. go. Okay, that's a good picture. Look at that. When Hulkster, his like one of his, he's been in literally some of the biggest matches in wrestling history. But one of his iconic moments is Rock and Hogan when they did the face off and started looking around at the crowd. Mm-hmm. They didn't like wrestle for like ten minutes. <laughs> Like they're just soaking in the crowd, but Rock Hogan stare down. He's standing there in the ring. He's in the background. He was the ref for that match. Dude, that brings back so many memories right there. Good time. Go the bo- go right below the below the one you got highlighted. Let's see if you get it this time. Right here? Yeah. Hey. Oh, he's blocked. His Ooh. Kyoto's face is blocked. <laughs> Look, I got that same. It's right there on two. two two to the uh, left. Two to the left. <laughs> two to the left. Ooh, right there. Right there. Right there. There you go. Oh yeah. Got that yeah, same young buck. one. Kyoto, uh, yeah, he uh, he was in WWE his career, um, and uh, just a great dude, man. Um, from Jersey, lives in Florida now. He's a Steelers fan. Ooh, okay, Jack. Jack. I'm in there. I knew somebody was here. Um, <laughs> and so we do a mailbag every other week. Uh, so people, all I do is ask questions of if I see something in the news, kind of, but mostly it's just people that watch the podcast. Any mm-hmm. questions? And then on the weeks, he he does it every two weeks. And then the weeks he's not, I do it with another referee. 
which was N- Nick Patrick, who uh, his famous moment was in WCW. He was the NWO heel ref, where he refed the entire pay per view when the NWO won every match because he was their own personal ref. Yeah. Uh. Oh, he was a, a lot of people say he looked like Kenny Powers back in the day. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he, he had a next level right. mullet for a he while. He was an astronaut. Dude. Look at that. <laughs> That's Kenny Power. <laughs> oh, Nicholas Patrick. Oh, yeah, wow. to the right. Yeah, that right was here. Kenny Powers mullet time. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Um, <laughs> oh, my they, His dad right was there. assassin dad. number one. Yeah. His dad was the assassin, which is a wrestling legend uh, in the territory days. And he started Deep South Wrestling, which for a while... If you ever heard of OVW, which is the feeder into uh, WWE, Deep South was their train. NXT is what it is now. Okay, okay, I know what it's you're about. Deep South was that before they developed their own. Yeah, that was his dad. Hell yeah, the assassin. Um, and he had a long feud with um, Bullet Bob Armstrong, which is huge in the Florida, oh, yeah, he was, he Alabama was. territories. Um, they had a huge rivalry. Um, he was one of the great minds in wrestling. Rest in peace. There you go. Let's get this one. Let's get one. Dude Sorry. was like an arm wrestling champion. It was like sixties. Uh, Damn. Just an that was that there there they go. <laughs> there, there's uh, so his rival was the assassin, and oh, okay. which was Jody Hamilton. And the funny part is, for a couple years, I got to do the podcast with Road Dog. Uh, Jesse Shout James. Shout out, Road Dog. Yeah. Jesse nope. James. One of the greatest to ever do it. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, my na- that's my name on Call of Duty. I just want everybody yeah. to know that. There you go. There's the dog. Can uh, I get a hell? New Age Outlaws. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so his dad was Bullet Barb Armstrong. So he has a story. One of my most fascinating stories talking to him was when he was a kid. Jody Hamilton is the assassin, and he's seen him like do these TV promos where he would like take an eight by ten of his dad and put it on the tree, and then walk down and shoot it with his gun, and be like, "You're next, Bullet Barb Armstrong." <laughs> and then like three days later, that dude's in his kitchen eating dinner because they're friends, you know. And he's like, "That dude wants to kill Dad, you are we're, we're fucking eating stroking off with him. What's happening right now, man?" You talk about a guy that capitalized on the moment, everything that was this ruthless aggression era, this DX, this uh, so, this era so of chaos. Him and Billy Gunn, of course, yeah. bad the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, yeah, Billy Gunn. Uh, now, this, this is my favorite. Look at that tag team of all time. Not even close. What? Road Dog Jesse James oh. and Billy Badass. Dude. Yeah. When they came out, their whole their, their whole their whole intro was sang by everyone in the crowd. Like if you go watch old pay per views, they'll be in the middle of a pay per view. But I'll tell you this: when they came out, there was no bigger pop. Like the crowd's losing their mind, doing the whole thing. They get to the end, and if you ain't down with that, we got two words for you: suck, suck it. it. Like, dude, how many of us were doing that to our teachers? Come on, like, man, man, all yeah. day. Yeah. That's because of these dudes. And then when yeah. I get a call from him and he's like, are you interested in podcasts? You're like, what's going on with my life <laughs> right now? Like, is this, if I could write a letter to my young self, I'd be like, this is weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, being awesome. in the wrestling space has been fantastic. It's a really tight circle to get into, but once you get in, it's like the comic circle. You get in to stand up, you know everybody, you're trying to be polite, and then you start meeting people you can really hang with. Mm-hmm. And like, even if we go do a show, which is awful, we're still going to have a good hang. That's what you kind of start, you know, the circle starts tightening. Yeah. That doesn't mean anybody, they're not, it doesn't mean they're not funny. They're not good people. Mm-hmm. But like these dudes, even without comedy, we can hang. Kind of like the podcast sure. here. Yeah. Like we're doing the podcast because we like to hang. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like regardless of anything else. So you get this, it's kind of like the wrestling click. Like, if you're in, you're in. Okay. But it's really hard. You got to get in our circle. You know what I mean? Like, it's... You got to get it, though. Yeah, we. Well, you got to earn it. You're mm-hmm. not just... We're not taking everybody. You You might be a good dude. We might work with you. We have no problems. We don't hate you. But you're not in the circle. Yeah. You're not in our circle. Mm-hmm. You can find your own circle. 
Uh, you know, NWO had their own circle. The Click, oh, yeah. they had their own circle at first. BSK was yep. Papa Shango and Undertaker right, and Rikishi and Yokozuna. Yeah, Yoko. Oh, I didn't know yeah. about this. Yoko was in there. They were BSK, the Bone BSK. Street Killers, because yeah, they would play dominoes. They play Bones, ah. so they were the Bone Street Killers. So they started BSK. So it was Taker, Rikishi, Yoko, mm. uh, Papa uh, Shango. Uh, spelled it wrong. Hold up. A couple others. <laughs> It's BS. Oh my fucking gosh! I'm trying to put the K on up. K. It's not even. There we go. Word. Look at that. You got that you got good one right there. Savio Vega. Hell yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, Savio. Yeah, all the good one boys. Oh, man, Are we just gonna one. skip over the fact Brandon misspelled BSK hey, look, man, and spelled I, BSW I and then fast. change the S? <laughs> <laughs> Clicked it too fast. BSW, I misspelled it and yeah. then deleted the S yeah. and changed it. That that is a Beetlejuice moment. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Beetlejuice. look at that one uh, below it to the second line left. Right here. Next one. This. One? To the left. Oh, to the left. Fuck. Yeah. I'm tripping. Hold up. Here we go. I got That's you. in the back of Undertaker's bus. Ooh, look at that. Oh shit, Paul. Triple H, Briscoe, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. That's my guy. Paul Bear. Scott Ramon. Hall. The Godwin's. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Look at that, man. Razor Ramon. Imagine being in that dude. bus at that time, shit. dude. That's some shit. The bro. partying that they did. You getting was... drunk as hell? I'm not telling you. Oh God. I mean, there's a there's a little of you. You're like, I mean, they can't have more fun than we did at Don's house. I mean, we're, <laughs> I mean that's real. Like we're having a good time. Mm-hmm. It's a good yeah, time. A good time. But you're like, you're also like, yeah, they they probably had a better time than us. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know what they did, shit, but they man. did something that was shit, probably shit. better than us. Good shit. But they're back there playing dominoes. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Just having a fucking ball of a time. Oh, look at that one down below the main picture you got to the right, to the right, right. to the right, to the right. Right? right. To the right. Below down. the main picture. Oh, the now, main. Oh, take shit. Take and pop up. Yeah, that. Right To there? the left. Oh, okay, right there. Yeah. There. there we go. Gotcha. Look at that. This Godfather and... Oh my god, oh, dude! Oh man! Imagine Damn, them dudes a... walking in your bar, bro. What Shit! You... Excuse me, uh, excuse me, sir. I didn't mean to get in your way. <laughs> like he says, we just got into our second episode uh, where he made his debut as Papa Shango when he missed his cue on a pay per view. He's supposed to go out. It was uh, Hogan and was that Survivor Series? Damn, that could be wrong. Hogan on the second one. H- Hogan and um, Sid. Sid Psycho Vicious, Sid. Sid, yeah, mm-hmm. Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, whatever you want to call him, Psycho Sid. They just wanted to give him a push, so they're like, "Hey, they're going to have their match, and then you run out and interfere, and it's going to be DQ." But that'll mm-hmm. like make you as like the guy who interfered. Like mm-hmm. uh, he had did some small shit, but this is like big time. Mm-hmm. This is the the main event of a pay per view. Yeah, and you get on there with Hogan, and he's back there ready to go. He's like. Y'all tell me when to run. They're in Indianapolis where the Colts play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a long run, dude. And he's like, y'all just tell me when to go. And by the time they tell him when to go, it's too late in the real-time match. So by the time he gets there, the damn match is over. Like, he was supposed to interfere. He didn't get there in time. So Sid had to kick out on his own. And then they bump that like they do a halt. They have to change everything mm-hmm. on the fly Ooh. and then by the time he gets there he still does his stuff but it's like wait what are you doing here at the time everybody's like what's he doing here after the match you know what i mean <laughs> like something's wrong here mm-hmm. and like nerd wrestling fans and i say that with love because i'm not a nerd i'm a nerd wrestling fan not just a smart one I, like i don't know any of the history as much as i need to and Same. as much as everybody Same. thinks but i'm a wrestling fan Same. but Everybody who paid attention to that went, yeah, he missed his mark. He should have been in there. They t- It's talked about now. And then I got a chance to sit down with him on our podcast, the second episode. And, and we go month by month his whole career. So mm-hmm. we're just in the second month of his career. And he's making his debut on a pay-per-view on with Hogan and Sid <laughs> Justice. <You're> like, what? <laughs> and he's like, I was like, dude, who talked to you first? Like, when you went back, who was like, hey, man, you fucked up? Like, who was the first guy... Somebody looked at you and was like, "It's all right, dude. We'll figure it out." But you fuck. You mean he was like, "Not one person ever talked to me about it in my entire life, until fans." Oh shit! Wow. So they because, were like, "It worked. It worked." But it worked. But also, you, people don't realize they have live television two times a week, live, true, not recorded. So whatever your favorite show is, it's recorded. Mm-hmm. They have two live shows. 
now NXT three have three live shows they have to write for a week. Damn. It's live. So if you trip and fall and you're supposed to be the badass, we have to adapt now and then pivot everything we've had written of you're the badass, you've tripped and fell. <laughs> we have to scrap that, throw it in the trash, and figure out how to get to where we we're going to go with you tripping now. That's crazy. Like, think about how hard. So, like, people, like, criticize wrestling writers and, like, oh, that was stupid. Like, you don't know what they originally had. Now, look, one, it could have been stupid. I'm not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> but I'm saying you don't know what they, hey, we had this plan and dude got hurt. Mm -hmm. The snowball uh, effect. This that. was supposed to happen, but she got pregnant. Like, yeah, it's just getting out of control. What? I don't know what the fuck he's laughing about. I like Dom trying to use big words. It snowball is a snowball effect. Snowball that effect. Is what it is. Oh, I thought he was trying to get me to do blow. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> let's wait till the podcast is over, bro. We're watching preseason NFL. We don't even do blow at 2 o'clock. <laughs> oh, you got it. <laughs> Sorry, I went long on wrestling. Dude, no. Y'all wow. opened the door and we had to go. Oh, no, we I'm had to. So I do currently it. three constant wrestling podcasts. And then I do, all those are under the ad-free shows umbrella. Shameless plug. Go to adfreeshows.com. Uh, we have our Patreon there. Um, and I do, besides those, I do random one-off uh, Q&As with either a special guest we've never had on or some of our regular hosts. They do a monthly Q&A, and sometimes I host those. I think... Um, around this whenever it drops but i'll be doing live q a with eric bischoff so oh, i'll be hosting that shit. monday night shit. wars WCW. hell yeah Eric's that was fantastic dude um he's super great to talk to every time i get to hang out with him i'm just like well one it's just so cool and he's just in, he's a smart dude like period mm -hmm. like but not wrestling i mean he is but a, mm -hmm. a broader thing of business just business in general like anything you want to talk about business, you can like, hey, did you see so and so merge with so and so? And he's like, he's got like a whole page on it in his head. And you're like, Dude, that's the best my man knows what's around. going down. Hell yeah, they'll put you on game. So hard. of course he's got his own podcast, Shameless Plug, eighty three weeks, uh, which Check is it out eighty three weeks is how long you beat WWF in their prime when he was there with WCW and the NWO popped off and it changed wrestling forever. Yeah. It changed wrestling forever. It's what AEW is trying to copy right now. Mm -hmm. They're trying to they're trying to take over. Do it. Oh, do yeah. the whole. Yeah, they're they're the second biggest, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out how to uh, conquer the beast. And they got close a couple times, especially early on. They're not now, uh, but they're a viable number two. And I think it's good for the business for sure. Everybody I've known that's worked with AEW or in some kind of capacity. Look, it's like comedy. I mean, it's another comedy club opening up. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want more opportunities to work. Hell yeah. So whatever you want to say, hey, it might not be our A rooms and our B rooms. They're already taken. But for everybody else, it's more opportunity to get out there and be seen and then possibly get to those A and B rooms. Hey, I go headline over. I mean, you know how it is in comedy. True. First person to headline, you's not going to be a real comedy club like Levity Live in Huntsville, the Stardome in Birmingham or Zanies in Nashville. They're not going to be the first ones. No, no. You're going to go... You're going to commit. Somebody's going to go, can you headline? You're going to like, yep, and you can't headline. But you're like, yep, I can, because that was my opportunity, and I want to take the check and close the show out and tell everybody I headlined a room, and that's going to happen. And realistically, afterwards, you're like, yeah, I just winged it for about 15, 20 minutes. But, and then you go, somebody sees you there and go, well, if he's headlining, he can headline my room. He can headline my brewery. And then you start doing those, and then it's like somebody sees you out, somebody sees you at a club, A club or B club, and you feature for somebody, and then they go, hey, you need to come back. We got a one-nighter. Or next time you come back with a celebrity, you do Wednesday, and then you feature for them Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's like I want all the rooms to open that can open. I've never been, hey, we got too many, we got too many people doing open mics. No, we don't. Guess what? They're either successful or they're not. Yeah. And if they're successful, it means the comics are going there and going, hey, I'm having a good time here. I'm learning here. I'm actually processing my work. And then if it's not good, whether it's politics, whether it's the location and the venue, whether they didn't give it enough love and promotion, I, there's a thousand things on that side. Oh, God, yes. But just on the bare minimum, 
somebody's opened up another open mic or hey this guy doesn't want the month show at his bar i'm all for it it's more work for the rest of us more reps more times to be seen more times to build fan more times to work your material out and the more the merrier that's a huge thing to work your material out and like now that we are over a year and a half you know still young in the game but you got to start getting those 10 15 minute 20 minute sets yeah to work all your stuff out to know how it's going to go whenever you're uh doing your shit and the more opportunity you have to do that well just get about starting to um you know do more stuff around the Huntsville scene locally um and getting to you know meet you guys and hang out with you guys like i think a lot of i, I think Huntsville is a great comedy scene i have i think there's a ton of great comics and then my my personal thing was talking to other people from outside of it how is it and i'm like well it seems good it's definitely good hang um i hang with them we do open mics it's hard to tell with open mics so it's why i'm starting to now start trying to work with as many people as i can on quote unquote real shows where Mm -hmm. it's a paid audience to come to see comedy that's what i really mean not just an open mic or a quote unquote showcase where it's really five of us open micers getting together but it's like i i've seen all of you do open mics i've seen all of you bomb and this is me too i've seen all of you smash it doesn't mean anything in open a mic Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're a good or a bad comic because open mics are not made to win they're made to do my material i'm gonna like me like i told you i don't write anything so every open mic i do it at i want to try to spit out another tag or uh hey just do one more line whatever comes in your head just do one more line to throw in on this and some of that ends up being your closer or whatever like you know you guys know open mic is there to start working out material absolutely it is not to judge whether you're a good or a bad comic it's to get a rep I need to. I've had this in my notebook or my on my notes app or wherever you keep notes in your head. It doesn't matter. Do it on stage, then do it again and change something than the first time. Then do it again and change something again. Mm-hmm. Just because this tag didn't work at this open mic, you can do it the next night and the tag and worked. It could blow up. But you're going to get an overall sense of here's what kind of works and here's what mm-hmm. doesn't. And then you should also, for me, because I don't write good, I just try to feed off of what's going on. I try to just toss shit out. Do one more line. That's where I ended last time. I ended last time and I went, okay, I got my, analy- I analyzed what I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And then we moved on to the next bit. But now if I want to do it tonight, let's do it. Let's get to that point. Let's try every line I tried. And then let me do one more line, just whatever's on the top of my head. And more times than not, for me, the way I work, that stuff gets... Because you're getting out of your comfort zone. You're getting out of writing. You're like, what? what is this crowd? Even if it's a callback to something else that already popped off in your show, mm-hmm. you can just feed off that and build into it. And then you go, oh, now I've got some segues into this. You're so good at that, too. Yeah. You're really good at that. Like, everybody's not good at that, including me. But you, you, <laughs> you do that shit so well also i want to say that you're probably an accessory in a murder because of an open mic i've heard about this yeah so so cassie and i've seen that gentleman since <laughs> i've seen him since. did he have a gun in his waist that uh he did uh, he did i and don't want to i don't want to say his name though we're not gonna say his name have y'all said his name I uh, i've never I, we haven't talked about it yet on here oh okay yeah no we're not gonna say his let's name. call him tom tom look okay. tom cassio said a joke he said you want to say what you said or you want to leave it no it's a crowd okay. it's a crowd work joke yeah it's a crowd work joke it, that was me trying to work the, I, I know i want the, i think this crowd work joke will get over i love and invite crowd work some comics don't like crowd work i really like crowd work i, I went to school for improv when i was in la i want to do i want to mess around with the crowd a lot of people go, I have this, don't interrupt me. I'm going to get to the end of the script, and if you'll follow me, it'll be a damn good script. And I'm not hating on that. Mm-hmm. I can't write a script, so I have to adapt <laughs> and work off of what are we doing here. And so one of my bits, <laughs> the premise is, because this starts like a lot of my stuff does, just chilling and hanging with the boys. 
and then figuring out how to work it out later was hanging out with me and my guys. We always do stupid would you rathers or uh, dilemmas or name your, hey man, you can only keep three fast food french fries. Go. And then we get in a debate about it. So this started. <laughs> how much money would it take for you to take the money? Are we allowed to be dirty you here? You can say oh, anything. Hell yeah. We we're, this is a pro Hitler podcast. You can say whatever you want. I wouldn't, you <laughs> I wouldn't say. You know, we were sitting there watching preseason football today, and JJ went, "I want it to be known that I'm staunch anti anti Hitler," and I am. And I thought and that wasn't going to come that. up again. And then here you're like, and I'm like, you know what? If JJ said I want to be really, really like definitively on the side of anti Hitler, <laughs> I want to say that clearly into this. Yeah. That's a controversial. Man. Take on this show. Uh, okay. Three out of four, you know, who knows who's right? Huh? Oh, Three out of four. <laughs> Jake, I'd like to switch seats with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of four. Nope. So, Eric <laughs> Bischoff, uh, <laughs> he was misunderstood as yeah. well. <laughs> well that's a, yeah. <laughs> a good man right there man. uh the 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 premise on my set for this particular story was how much money would it take for you to trade in for the perfect dick mm -hmm. think about your perfect dick so i'm going to give you your perfect dick or oh, one million dollars because you can ask that question a hundred times to the dude in the front row and 100 times it'll probably be different he won't want to answer it. He's going to answer it bravely. He's going to take the dick immediately. He's going to take a million dollars immediately. His wife's going to come in and say, take the million dollars. Like, <laughs> take the dick, take the meat. Like, there's a thousand ways. That I think that's the fun part of it. Yeah. And so to do that, though, you have to start uh, doing that at shows at some point, no matter what level, and seeing what people are going to start saying. So you can start getting into that mindset and getting while i negotiated with one, each, tom yeah he said he had a perfect dick <laughs> yeah i don't need to. i already have a perfect dick he didn't want the money and i said okay he said i have a perfect dick and i said two million are the perfect dick and he took the dick and so now we're going through it and now i see his um Girl. Lady friend. I don't know what their relationship was. There's a lady at the table with him, and she slyly goes, mm. <laughs> when he Swear gets, to God, she did that. He's she like, like, I have the perfect dick. And she's like, mm. and then as we negotiate, I go, I don't want to bring your girl in, and blah, blah, blah. I think it's having a fun time. Not, I wasn't aggressive to him. No, not at all. I just posed a question, and now we're riffing. And then a lady at the bar says, "Hey, your girl said take the perfect dick." The black lady at the bar because you said, need it. She's already said he don't have the perfect dick or something she, like that. Yeah, right? she said she said he ain't got the perfect dick. <laughs> and I'm like, That's oh, exactly this is great. This is a fun time to end. Like, because I was like, this is a fun show. Like, I finally because the first time part of my set, I did not get laughed, and then this got a laugh, thankfully. The, for the lady on the bar <laughs> and then afterwards i was still down there and you guys went outside and saw some chaos dude so we go outside i'm talking to charlie he just comes across the street he stops in the middle of the street and throws his phone as the guy as he was can. just talking to tom tom which we didn't know till later was signed up to be a comic yeah. that night i didn't I know that i thought he was i thought the reason he was mad because he went up and didn't get any laughs but then you guys were like, no, he didn't go up. No, I never saw him go up. So he didn't go up. So I'm like, why did he just smash his phone? It had to be because his girl said she did, he didn't have yeah. the perfect dick. Cut to last week. You know, cut. this is a month later. I come up. He's like, hey, can I get a lighter? He has a cigarette. And I see, like, dirt in his fingernails, right? And, like, deep down in there. So this is what I see. This, when, you, when, you have dirt, when you have dirt deep down in there, that means you haven't been home in a while. You haven't showered at a while. So it's, it's immediately what I thought. You haven't been home in a while. You haven't. And then he goes up that night. <laughs> what? And he says, I had to kill somebody in self-defense last week. He did. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking Dude, about? He killed, this, he killed this girl. She wasn't with him. Hey. She's been there every time with him. All right. All right. I saw <laughs> He killed her. Dude. I saw him at an open mic since that night. Uh-huh. And I was worried... 
because I'd heard all y'all's stories. <laughs> yeah. I was worried when I saw him. I'm like, he's going to come up to me and like kill me <laughs> <laughs> or like be ready to fight. You know what I mean? And he never said one well, like. He so now I'm like, I don't know if he noticed, like he realizes it was me oh. or he didn't give a shit. I don't know the case. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but he never mentioned it to me. But that night we're all hanging out after the mic. And by the way, he did a pretty damn good job. Yes, he did. Uh, I was night. like, he did oh, man, that was pretty good. I yeah, was I was like, damn, I don't. There was some of them I want to Google to see if it was already on the Internet. But I was like, <laughs> Jake told me he did. So, who? Jake, he said he, sees, he searched it up. Because I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, that's some good shit. He's like, Reddit. I was yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, I got, what's my, where I got open mic? I don't care. I, <laughs> my point was, I just still wanted to see, well, I mean, he was still a funny dude regardless. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, that was funny. And then we're hanging out afterwards. And I we're like, Bob and Bob. Yeah, you're going to the show. Uh, the, yeah, we got a show in Trustful. I'd like for you to come work. That's good. I mean, I don't have your number, Bob. And... <laughs> Tom goes, killed a man last week. <laughs> and we're like, what's that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, self-defense. I stabbed him. You ever been stabbed? Yes, and we're I like, remember that. No, man. we, uh, no, I've never been stabbed. No. And he's like, I've been stabbed. <laughs> Brandon's like, hey, man, will you pass that joint? <laughs> <laughs> Before you start that story, will you go ahead and hand that over here so I can get it? Because it sounds like it's going to be a long story, you know? I was like, good call, dude. Don't get stuck in this story. Once you talk about killing a man, I'm not asking you to go ahead and pass it. You know what I mean? You can achieve it as long as you want after that. <laughs> Friends like, hand that in. That's a long story, guys. I was like, bet. That's oh a good call. He actually stabbed and killed his yeah. girlfriend after <laughs> she transitioned. She chose the perfect city. <laughs> she chose it. What did he say, Brandon? And he was talking about how this dude tried to stab him. He yeah. Like, uh-huh. Basically, he did stab him. He was like, dude, when you get stabbed, it's like, it's life changing. Like, yeah. It's, it's not bet. the same. It feels bad. It, it is, different. by the way. He's like, <laughs> Somebody. I've never been stabbed, but I promise you, it's going to yeah. be life changing the you know first day I did. Tom, I just I remember you guys talking about, dude, I knew him for half my whole life. Like, we, we went to school together and everything. <laughs> half my and we played, life. Dude, he seen me when I played basketball. He was there with me. Was this when we went? When we went? No, I'm play? talking about back in like middle school. <laughs> I'm talking about middle yes. school. Like JJ, after, he knows this guy, dude. Yeah. Like after no, we, this now, is <laughs> half my whole life. Dude. I've never heard anyone say the phrase "half my whole life." Yes, man. Half of it. Brandon, you have some of the most craziest phrases that I'm like. <laughs> I've never heard a human say those sen- <laughs> those words in that order before. This just Brandon knows multiple murderers. Yeah, because the other dude killed that dude in Russian roulette and then tried to hang out with me. And after he told that nice story, he's like, "So you want to hang out with me?" Oh yeah. Okay, so I had a friend <laughs> who uh, my my mom Brandon. told me in third or fourth grade she was like, "You can't hang out with him no more because he always had butterfly knives and he would do tricks." <laughs> <laughs> The school talent yep. show. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was. <laughs> he was. He, he always, always had, had butterflies. Yeah, still on. be a union flags everywhere and not <laughs> <the> shit. <laughs> oh, wait, what's a union flag? Like the Soviets. The, the Soviets. Like the, the little, Soviet little USSR little hammer and sickle. Yeah, 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 man, that's Soviet. That's a, I thought Soviets. <laughs> yeah, keep up. <laughs> I thought the Soviets was who attacked Tweety Bird earlier. Oh, and Mel Blanc. <laughs> Didn't Mel Blanc do the Soviets? No, no, man. Back <laughs> in the. What's the Soviets? <laughs> yeah, the Cold War, like back in the Cold War days. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Russia, Soviet. Yeah. Soviet. You didn't know yeah. anybody that killed somebody in World War Two. Uh, Soviet, Soviet. That's just That's what you're Cold talking War. about. Okay. He had the no, Soviet no, but Union he was flag. a fan of it. Like he had the flags and shit. Yeah, yeah. and he uh, did what did he do? Call of Duty. He always played that. And then one day, my mom was like, "You can't have with him no more." That's okay. One day, I saw him on the news. And uh, he did Russian roulette with this guy and then shot and killed him and said it was an accident. So they let him out. And uh, then after that, he was like, hey. <laughs> yeah. This is real. Yeah, this, he's is real. Right this is now. real. This is real. This is real. He out. roams the streets. <laughs> yeah, like I said, yeah, he's, well, he's man, near my that's house. a good dude. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Can he watch this? Do you know if he's oh, watching this? Yeah, he this? can. Yeah, he can. He's like close. <laughs> hey, he's man, like, I hate you got hemmed up like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Government's against us, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. He was, oh he was, I thought he was like one of the nicest people until he did that, man. 
Because he was like so kind. Yeah, he murdered a guy. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to have to think about this a little yeah, bit. I, I can't say. I would Is say he a name Sylvia or not? No, he was uh, just. He had blonde <laughs> hair. He always, he supported he bl- it though. He had blonde hair. And he looked like Johnny Carson a little bit if he was young. <laughs> yeah, you look like Johnny Carson? <laughs> I know Johnny oh, Carson. I know Johnny Carson. He yeah. looked like Johnny Carson because he, was, he young. was young. No, I'm saying when he was young. Oh. Though, like young, young. <laughs> yeah, he was. A, I, I have to see what happened. Have y'all took the SAT test yet? The we, IQ we, test? We, we took we it. Yes, we hey, did. But yes, we did. I'm scared that Brandon got higher than me. Wait, have y'all revealed it yet? No, no, no. no. Oh, on the live God. show. 31st. The 31st? 31st of August. That's shenanigans. Yeah, we're going to reveal it. Oh, and I don't, we, awesome none of us know. Day. Only person who knows everybody scores Kim. Uh, and then and Kim's been treating us mighty different. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Been treating me the same. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Spoken like a true Sylvia. Yeah, man. (laughs) Oh, my God. Sylvia, right? Sylvia. Sylvia. Yes. I've been saying it wrong my whole life. You have? Yeah. It's a couple of words. half your whole life. Yeah, man. Half my whole life. Hell yeah, man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Half my whole life. Damn. All right. I'm over. Brandon's also the first person on stage I've ever seen. I'm in a domestic. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> he said, I'm an abusive relationship. Y'all fuck with those? <laughs> and the girl's like, No, we don't. <laughs> no, we do not. He got a woo one time. Yeah, one dude said woo. I was like, Oh, shit. You serious? <laughs> Are you okay, bro? Oh, no. Y'all fuck with those. Y'all fuck with those. Yeah. Well, before he was like, y'all fuck a car. Do y'all fuck with that? <laughs> no. Oh, and he's like, y'all fuck with abusive relationships. I'm like, that is closer to fucking a car. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm closer to that than having sex with a vehicle. <laughs> oh, yeah, to clarify, y'all, I'm talking about the car, and I know people, man. My vehicle. I hope y'all know that. Oh, you're talking about the abusive yes, relationship? Yes, yes, abusive relationship. So they'll be like, hey. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the car. <laughs> I'm just making sure. All right, yeah. so. This ghostly Muhammad Ali means it's, uh, we're at 50 minutes. Yes, but we are. I heard you do a really good impression. We're in 50 minutes? Yes, we are. Yeah. No, we're minutes. not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 50 minutes. And, uh, Y'all didn't even get to your research. We have got to nothing. That's, nah. that's Can we you... keep going? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Let me put him away. He'll walk off. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll float gone. off, dude. Or bring that back at... Uh... 4.20. Okay. 4.20, what time? Yeah, Let's we'll see what time it is. Oh, hell yeah. What time is it? It is 3.19. Shouldn't hell have yeah. said that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so much longer <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, four. Four is a good number. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. How about four? Hey, so we can yeah. eat some ham slaughter. I want time to eat. Yeah, yeah. We oh, got to have yeah. time to eat. Yeah, everybody that comes here eats. So good, dude. Going, I can't oh wait. Yeah. All right, well, let's go till four. Okay. Hell yeah. You, go look, get into your I wanna, research. I want to know. I want to know. I heard you do a very good impression of uh, Matt Foley. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we get a little bit of? Uh, well, sure. One, you should know that was. One, you should know I broke something over yeah. here. <laughs> Don't worry and about then that. Two, that was my comedy idol was Chris Farley. Love it. So that was Saturday Night Live. I didn't want to do stand up. I wanted to do sketch and improv. Mm-hmm. I saw them do a sketch and went, "That's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life." I just don't know why they're getting paid to do that on television, <laughs> but I'd really like to do that instead of hanging vinyl siding with my dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that looked very appetizing to me. And so um, that's what I would. I watched Saturday Night Live then religiously. Mm-hmm different than it is now of course but yes. uh chris farley was a guy where i thought man that is i mean even without me trying to do chris farley as soon as he came out all my high school friends were going you're chris farley like I, it was just like that the the big guy you're loud you're funny you got lumped in the same thing mm-hmm. which i was fine with i was like yeah he's fucking hilarious um, and then, of course, Matt Foley, the motivational speaker. So um, I did that. Uh, I've done that. Yeah, I used to do that impression all the time. Um, 
I actually did that impression for. Oh, what's her name? She was on Saturday Night Live. Blonde hair, real Ooh. ditzy. Uh, uh, not Molly Shannon. Uh, mm-hmm. Christina Wig. Uh, no, way before that. Way oh, before, before that. Ooh. Way before like that. Chris Farley time. Negative Nancy. Not negative Nancy. What's wrong? <laughs> um, He's kicking. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Kate McKicken. Uh, <laughs> she is funny. But, uh, <laughs> no. Look up female uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Was it 1975? <laughs> no, 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 it could have been a reunion type shit, I man. Hope you died dude. <laughs> in a fire, like a hot one, <laughs> a hot fire. Oh, man. SNL. Let's oh, see. he's typing blonde. Well, you you burned down something, huh? Oh, right there, Victoria Jackson. Where's? Oh, oh yeah, right. Victoria Jackson. Right. Damn, right, right. There we go. Oh shit! What year? Nineties? No, she's definitely not, not the seventies. You <laughs> asshole. <laughs> uh, uh, she was great on Saturday Night Live. She was really good friends, and I they they actually made me do my impression for her. In I, I was emceeing her show at the Star Dome in Birmingham, mm-hmm. and friends came back and radio people and the owner and stuff, and they were like, "Hey, he Casio does a." Great impression of Matt Foley, the motivational speaker, who she is in. She's in segments with him doing that. So, like, that's the time she was there. Mm-hmm. She's got her two daughters uh, there at the time. I'm, I'm going to be wrong, but let's just say preteenish at the time, old enough to know Chris Farley. See, uh, go, go uh, yeah. She's she's sitting on the couch. Go down. Wait, go back. Oh, hold just on. go down three. Just All right. go, go down three. Tell him when to stop. To, right to the right. To the right. All right, right here. Mm-hmm. All right. There you go. She's sitting there. Steven Seagal. Ooh, Steven Seagal. Farley. You know, so she's that's her time. Is that mm-hmm. is that whole time? Anyway, I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't. I don't want to do it. This is a lot of pressure. She worked. That's one of her friends. You know yes. what I mean? Like, th- that's a weird pressure to do an impression of somebody who's passed away too soon. That they were super close and did all this magic together. And uh, everybody's like, do it, do it. And she was like, yeah. You know, she's in a tough spot. She's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> so then I'm like, my name is Matt Foley, <laughs> motivational speaker. I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> and so I'm doing the whole thing, yeah, pulling yeah. the pants up. El Nino. I'm doing the whole <laughs> Spanish version and everything. <laughs> Her daughters start crying. Oh, One girl shit. goes, I miss Chris and starts crying. So then it's like she goes to console them and there's seven of us in the room going, probably I'm going to walk outside. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go out here. Yeah, let's go out here. Let's go out here for a second. That was when I was like, I probably shouldn't do that. Like, yes, around that. friends is fine, but let's don't ever do it for somebody who. No. I'm sure, like, if I did it for David Spade, he's like, you're not even close. You know what I mean? Like, but for just for that time and for a kid to do that, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> I've made Victoria Jackson's daughters cry. <laughs> and then I had to do, she came to, to uh, at the time, stand up live, and I love to do live in Huntsville. And. I, they called me to open up for her, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm down with that." And so I meet her. I'm like, "Hey, you probably don't remember me. It's been like ten years at least, or whatever." And I was like, "My name's Cassio, and I opened up for you in Birmingham." And she was like, "Yeah, I remember going to Birmingham." And I was like, "I did an impression of. They made me do an impression of Matt Foley. I made sure they were like." They made me. <laughs> they made me do an impression of Matt Foley, and your daughter started crying. Like I told her, and she's like, "I do remember that. Yeah, that was not a good night." And she was like, "Yeah, yeah but she was like, you did great on the show and everything." And I was like, "Yeah, I didn't talk too much after that. So can I get a picture? Because I didn't." Afterwards, after that, I was like, "Nah, I don't. I'm not going to be the guy. I made your daughter cry. I don't want a picture with you." So I could be like, "Hey, I made her daughter cry tonight doing Matt Foley." <laughs> Yeah, so that was my jam, man. Chris yeah. Farley was my jam. I love oh, Chris yeah. Farley. Come on. So when I moved to L.A., started going to the Groundlings, I wanted – my goal was not stand-up. My goal was Mad TV or stand, or Saturday Night Live. And what year did you go? 
I went to Los Angeles in 2003. 2003? Ooh, that's a good oh, year. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Kind of sit in on Mad TV. I had known, uh, I had met before that through radio and stuff, Frank Caliendo, who's yeah, I love Frank the king Caliendo. of impressions. He was on Mad TV John at that Madden. time. He invited me. I got to sit in the stands and, and watch him record. And, and even watching that, I was like, yeah, this is, you just see somewhere you're like, this is where I need to be mm-hmm. right here. Um, and then now I'm here, but, um, <laughs> it's the same, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty the same. much, yeah, it is the same. <laughs> some uh, kind of no. production value. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw it and it confirmed. I'm like, I'm out here for the right reasons. Like that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then I did, I, I did some open mics in Birmingham. Uh, I'd met some comics and they were like, you should go do stand up. and did some open mics over at the start on. That's where I started for about a year, probably. And then I moved to Los Angeles. Didn't do any stand-up. I was doing just sketch and improv and focusing on that. Did some sketch shows and sketch. Uh, you know, they're booking this sketch show, so I'd go do that or a contest where you bring your best sketch or whatever the case may be, and then go into class at night. And then um, I was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And at the time, the guys who uh, booked all the comics – for, for a Tonight Show, mm-hmm. they booked Last Comic Standing because it was NBC. Oh. So they were like, y'all know all the comics. We'll do it American Idol style. We'll get some people off the street, mix that in with real comics that just don't have any, it got not getting enough love. You know, if you get in the comedy business, you'll be like, if you spend time on the road, there's road comics that are funnier than anybody you've ever heard of That's and work got. 50 weekends a year. And you'd be like, why do y'all not know about these guys? Mm Because they're the funniest people on the planet. Y'all are going to see celebrity acts because they have a name. And they might be entertaining. But they're not. I could show you the guy next week where we're giving away free tickets to that literally will have you, like, pissing your pants and crying. 100%. The Dale Jones and the Sean Jones are two. Like, just there's some people out there where you go, they're just a road dog. And they're, I promise you, they'll beat any special you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just funny people. And so they, they were booking those people. Like, hey, these dudes have been on the road not getting their due. Of the course, this is before social media, so they wasn't like you can make your own brand. It's a comic. You're just going to, you're just, whoever the clubs are headlining, that's who they're headlining, and that's who's famous. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so they booked some of those, some people off the street, and then they were like, hey, you're a funny dude. You're doing segments for us. Come try out for stand up, uh, last comic standing. And I was like, I don't do stand up. Like y'all work with me. I do man on the street stuff. I do segments. I do sketches. And they were like, Hey, we just need, we need bodies. Like you can say you were on stand up live. I mean, say we we're on last comic standing. And so I was like, uh, okay, when's the trial? And they were like, we're going to start in three months. And so I was like, I'm not camping on the fucking street. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, no, you just walk in. I'm like, all right, I'm in. And so then I, for three months or whatever it was, three or four months, I had to figure out how to get all my sketches that I wrote and improv shit and f- turn that into a five minute comedy set. Holy shit. And so I started doing any mic I could get in Los Angeles, doing five minutes just to literally try that how am i going to turn what i'm doing into stand-up because it's not the same people think it's the same no it's totally different when i was at the groundlings they would have the sunday company which is right before you were in the main company and when i was there the sunday company was people like Kristen wig and will forte and some other people like that Holy shit. and they would bring in a guest every like every now and then, like just a funny person, mm-hmm. celebrity, a stand up, another improv person. You don't know who it is, but they would come and try to just sit in and be a guest that night. And you would see so many stand up comics. They either got it or they didn't. If you come into improv comedy and try to get to an ending, you know, I got a joke. I know which ending I'm going towards. I'm driving right towards there. Mm hmm. Ske- improv is not like that because you could say something that throws the whole thing off where I thought I was going. And like I saw Louis C.K. there one night and he's about four or five sketches in. And he's like, I'm out. Like in a fun way. Mm-hmm. Because you would see his stand-up brain. They would start a scene at the beach 
and he starts calculating and saying some lines, but you can go, he sees this ending, this finish line. And they would go, oh, yeah, but we got to walk home. And he would go, wait, wait, I've already got us mapped out. Mm-hmm. I'm already trying to set you up for this finish line, which is what a stand-up does, is I'm going to get us there together. Yeah. And an improv with so many people involved, you never know where they're going to go. And so he would set everything up. They would go left when he thought they were going to go right. And then it's like, I don't know where we're going. I already had this finish line mapped out. And he'd be like, I got nothing. Yeah. That would be so hard. To, he he stopped to doing it. And everybody's like laughing and loving him. It wasn't like he was mad. Mm-hmm. He was just like, this is wild. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not made for this. And he's yep. not. That's why he's a goat where he's at. Because mm-hmm. he's a stand-up comic. He knows how to do stand-up comedy at its best. Yeah. And so to for think real. about improv, it's like, that's two different demons. It's why so many stand-up comics go, don't, don't talk in my set. I know where we're going. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's changing, especially stand uh, in social media times. Now you can just throw crowd work. Crowd out. work specials. You know, you get uh, like stand ups now. We're doing like saying they do an hour. They'll do 45 minutes of material. And then the last 15 minutes is, is straight crowd work so they can. Sure. You know, get the clips, which I understand because you don't want to burn your material. You yeah. Know, or it's just not even complete, let, com- complete yet True. to where you want it. Speaking of burning stuff, do you burnt down your grandma's house? Ooh. <laughs> it was <laughs> the wrong grandmother's house. <laughs> it was not my... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Time out. There's two different stories I got myself. up. Okay. I did burn my grandmother's house down, <laughs> and, I burnt, and I went swimming in another wrong grandmother's swimming pool that is legendary from the radio. Uh, grandmother, yes. On about my 13th birthday, 12th, 13th, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. my grandparents lived on the river in Asheville, Alabama, and they had this double-wide trailer on the river, and this couldn't get any better. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, we had our birthday. My birthday is July 6th, so it's always... I get lumped into the 4th of July mm-hmm. party. And uh, so we all hung out, shot fireworks. At the end of the night, they're telling me to go clean up the fireworks. I'm lazy and fat, so I don't <laughs> care. I just go out and grab what I can see, but I throw all these stuff in the bag, trash bag, big black hefty bag, put that in a rubber trash can, put that rubber trash can up against the vinyl siding double wide. Uh. We left for the night, and, uh, of course, stuff was still hot in there, and it stayed hot, and then it melts through plastic garbage bag. Mm-hmm. It's getting fueled by plastic rubber <laughs> trash bag. Now it's on vinyl siding, and at about 3 a.m., my grandparents woke up to their trailer on fire. <laughs> um and so, uh, yeah, that burnt down. They were dead. <laughs> that was not good. Uh, they survived, thankfully. But, yeah, bur- but I didn't know... I knew their house burned as a kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't find out that it was my responsibility until I was like 23. Like, <laughs> really? we were at a, yeah, we were hanging at her new house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my grandfather had passed away at this time, but she's got a new house. She moved closer to town where we were in Gadsden and got a pool so everybody would still v- visit. She knew that. And uh, we were just sitting there one time, and somebody said something about throwing an ashtray out in a trash can or something. They're like, yeah, you're going to burn the house down. They don't call me Casio, but Matt, they were like, that's what, you know, like Matt did. I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) And it opened up this whole trauma window for me of, I burnt my grandparents' house down. I didn't know until I was 23. They were like, and so my whole family knew it and just didn't tell me because I was too young, and they didn't want to put that. You know, they didn't want put to tell that on. me. That's good. Family. You burn your grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> at twenty three, you're like, man, I got a lot to deal with. You know what I mean? I, I apologize. I should have brought snacks today, Grandma. I should be pitching in every time I come over here. <laughs> I burn your house down. I should be pitching in. <laughs> And that sounds like a great cover story for insurance fraud. <laughs> I like that. It's fireworks by our teenage yeah. grandson. Because you know the insurance people aren't smart enough to figure out like chemistry and shit. They're like, rubber, yeah, that burns, right? <laughs> Oil. That's you know? good. It's all good, right? And I think vinyl siding is a common theme in your life, man. <laughs> I'm white trash. Maybe I'm white trash superstar, my friend. There's a lot of vinyl. 
vinyl siding. And yeah, linoleum. Dad did vinyl and gutters, mm-hmm. and I worked with him. He was a firefighter, and uh, he had to retire early because he um, what do you call it? Smoke weed, and um, <laughs> uh, he he had to retire early from there, and so he started his own construction business, vinyl siding and gutters. I worked with him for a few summers in high school. Then I worked with my uncles, who owned a tile place, doing tile. And in that six-year stretch, I was like, fuck manual labor. (laughs) I would like to never do this ever again. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, that's what I was like. I got to figure out how to make this entertaining stuff real. Uh, So that was my whole deal. I, I literally was like, I'm just not built for it, guys. There's people that do this job, and I, more power to them. I'm just not. I can't do it. I mean, I could do it if that was my last deal, but mm-hmm. I, I'm saying, like, I did it and was like, what can I do? I won't make as much money, but what if I'm just funny? Can I figure out how to do that? <laughs> I don't make as much money as you, but I I don't lay tile. Yeah. Which, for me, sucks dick. Oh, God, it's the worst. Yeah. Man, so manual I'll, labor I'll, is the worst. It is. Bro. It is. You see how black I'm getting right now? For <laughs> <laughs> doing that shit. Dude. That is the worst part. Of it. Damn, that the is worst part. the worst part. Ooh. Is the suntan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he put on there that you burned down the house. And what you got? What did you say? You got uh, beaten up by a monkey? Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Your response was way I'm better sorry, than that. I don't, <laughs> fuck with them, I don't fuck with monkeys, man. Fuck them. I don't either, sir. Yeah, that's man, a great whoa, call. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's a good whoa. role to have in life, man. JJ's like, I'm Guys. not co-signing that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, said man. it. We can agree with it. That's going to be a clip for sure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> JJ going. <laughs> uh, Man, that was actually a radio uh, when I started with Rick and Bubba and radio. Uh, somebody called and said, hey, guys, I don't know if y'all know about it, but at the Coleman Country Club or golf course, I, don't know, I think it was Coleman, somewhere around there, Hayden maybe, I don't know, it's a golf course. But they were like, this guy that li- has a house where his backyard is up against the golf course, mm-hmm. he has a monkey. And we're like, what kind of monkey? And he's like, he's like, I don't know, one of those little tiny monkeys and he wears a diaper. <laughs> And he goes, it's kind of fun, but it's kind of not. If your ball goes too close to their yard, the monkey will run out and hop the fence and grab the ball and take it back to the house. And so everybody knows this is the hole. You got to watch it to the right. There's the monkey house. And if you hit it over there, you're going to lose your golf ball. So we started looking at it and we're like, oh, that sounds funny. And we're like, let's go check it out. So we go to the golf course and we find the guy. We go up to his house and we start. We're like, "Hey, man, we heard you got a monkey here, and it steals golf balls." Yeah, one of those. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of what he looked like, except bigger. Way bigger. Huh? Yeah, it's a baby. Oh, find a bigger one. This was an adult <laughs> that he didn't want the monkey to shit in his house, so he put a diaper on him. That's a baby <laughs> who didn't know better. This dude was just lazy monkey owner. Um, <laughs> so he's got a monkey, and uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll bring it out." So he brings the monkey out. And we start interacting with it. And, um, you know, at that point, I wasn't scared of monkeys. I just, especially one in a diaper. You're like, this thing's kind of cute. You know what I mean? Look at it. I mean, it's kind of cute at the time. And he would like run up on you and like climb on you. And we're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Especially we're like, this is making great radio, mm-hmm. like great audio. And he climbed, the monkey climbed on me and he's like climbing around. And then he's like doing the, I had hair back then, believe it or not. <laughs> and he starts like doing the monkey thing where they're looking through your hair and stuff. And I'm like, this is hilarious. And then <laughs> he like took a little nibble of my ear. He's like, <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, your monkey just kind of like nibbled on my ear. That's pretty funny. And he's like, yeah, he does that sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, I'd like that for not to happen ever again. <laughs> and he was like, well, he just does it. Something, you, you know, just tell him not to do it. I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Don't bite my ear. That should be the end of it. And so he's like on my shoulder and he's like, he swung over and he like started biting this one. This like getting a little harder. And I was like, hey man, I'd like your monkey to not bite my ear anymore. How do we make that happen? Can you get him off of my shoulder? He's like, ah, he just kind of does what he wants, man. And you're like, 
Uh, I need to not want to bite my ear. He goes, I guess just cover your ears, man. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, dude. And so now the monkey is like getting in on it. And I'm like, all right, bud, this is funny. So I cover my ears and I'm like, hey, this is great. And the monkey is literally like trying to pull my fingers off of my ear. Mm -hmm. He's like mad that I've covered my ear. And I'm like, this is kind of funny. This is great. You know, and everybody's laughing. We're having a good time at that point. And then the monkey grabs the front of my shirt like this with one hand, puts his feet here. So he's like hanging in front of me, like right here. He's got a hold of my shirt and he's like hanging. And he's just staring at me. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, man, I think you should come get your monkey probably. <laughs> like, this is not fun anymore. And I, I, like, close my eyes. I'm like, hey, man, get your monkey off of me. And the monkey fucking pimp slaps me. Oh, damn. <laughs> and I was like, bam. I was like, what? <laughs> You're like, Did I get, just get slapped? I should probably kill the monkey right now, you know? And he was like, he slapped He's me in there. like that. Oh, my God. Thanks for the flashbacks, dude. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that, that the year. one on the right, he's looking dead at me and slapped me multiple times. <laughs> and so I go, hey, dude, not funny anymore. And I, I do like this. I'm trying to, because the monkey literally has my collar. Like, he's, like, robbing me for money. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, if this is a human, you'd be like, I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> but he's this big. And you're like, I still think I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> and so I push him off of me. And he, in one movement, as I push... He just, you know, climbs up on my head. So now he's on my arm. I'm like, hey, dude, come get your monkey off of me. I really want the monkey. I, I don't know how to politely say <laughs> I need the monkey off of me right now. And he, they're all laughing. Oh, this is great, I'm like, buddy. So I'm like, then I start shaking like this. And I'm like trying to push him off my arm. And I don't know if you know about monkeys, but they don't fall easily. <laughs> They're made to not fall from things. And so I finally push him, and now he's hanging from my arm. And as he's hanging, I start swinging. I'm like, hey, man, get the damn monkey off my arm. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. Like, I need the monkey off of me. And as I'm doing this, monkey rears back and bites my elbow as hard as he can. Full attack, Mike. And I'm like... What? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like sling him and he goes down and he like runs away and like, bark, bark, like making the noise. Uh -huh. And then he like circles around and he start, like starts coming to me. And I'm like, hey, man, he just bit me. If the monkey comes over here, I'm punting it across the golf course. I need <laughs> yeah. you to know it's not going to end good for the monkey because I was gentle that time and I'm not going to be gentle. <laughs> and so he starts coming and he's like getting in front of him. And the monkey like goes around a little bit, and the, and then the owner, I see like the, you know when the owner of any wild animal figures out, oh I'm not in charge anymore. Yeah. He yeah. goes, I see the dude go, build a human wall around Cassio, and you're like, man, this just got serious. <laughs> so there's like seven full grown dudes standing in a circle around me because the monkey now wants to get back to me. Are oh, you fucking around? Yeah, man. and I'm like, they have to, like, <laughs> escort. So I was like, man, we're driving home. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm bleeding. I got my wrapped up in a bandage, and I was like, all right, I need to think of it as a performer. I was young on the radio, and I was like, this story is going to be epic. I think listening at home, everybody realized how epic it was. I just need to attack it as a performer and be like, that was fun. Let your emotions go. It's going to be fun. We get back to Birmingham. I get to my desk at the radio station. I have 10 voicemails, and they are progressively worse. Hey, man, I'm a veterinarian. You don't need to be around that monkey. Hey, man, I just heard you got bit by a monkey. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mitchell. This is the CDC, Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. We have been informed by multiple people that you have been bitten by a monkey. You and the monkey need to go to your nearest doctor immediately. Are you serious? God, so I called them fuck. back, and they're like, I told them the story, like thinking they're going to laugh, and they're like, no, there's nothing humorous about that. <laughs> oh my you need to go to a doctor today. And I'm like, for what? And they're like, a 
like a thousand different reasons you need to go. You've been bitten by a monkey, bro. Like, this is not good for you. And then they're like, you need to find the monkey. And we're like, I mean, we know where the monkey lives. He's actually on the golf course. He's set up pretty nice. Uh, and they're like, you need to get the monkey. And the monkey needs to go in and get tested for rabies, which, if you know anything about that, yeah, you can't means they that. murder the, the pet. Mm-hmm. The pet gets his head chopped off. Damn. And so, <laughs> word oh, no. now gets around to this guy. We're having to call this guy back. He's like, the monkey ran after y'all left. Oh, He's claiming that it did. It did. Yeah, he. Just but he don't want everybody showing up killing his pet monkey. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, the monkey escaped. <laughs> so then it's like a hunt. In Birmingham, Alabama, uh, or Coleman and Hayden, whatever this was, was there's an escaped monkey. Could be rabid. And we're like, bro, the monkey's at the house, dog. <laughs> monkey's at Meemaw's house. You know what I mean? What are we doing? That could have went so much worse. Oh, so bad. Yeah. Have you, have you ima- could you imagine if you got on the radio and you're like... Get guys, fuck the monkey house by the golf course in Coleman, <laughs> Alabama. And the, and the news are like, local radio host goes on racist tirade. <laughs> and they're like, find that fucking monkey. <laughs> he bit me. Like, all this shit. Damn. Sounds real dog whistly, man. You know I mean? Dog whistly. <laughs> yeah, it's a dog whistle. Yeah. Was that post uh, Tickle Me Elmo incident or after? <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, you don't know about that when that mad chimpanzee. What? The chimpanzee incident. He bit that lady's tickle, face yeah, off. Yeah, that me what, off. ripped her face off. Oh, it was yeah. over in a tickle. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, we, we, here's the deal. This is a dog whistle. This is actual animal kingdom. <laughs> we shouldn't have any human interaction with monkeys, guys. I agree. I, I agree. Fuck what, you don't need one, to have they one. They have strength beyond anything we can comprehend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. It's real bad, guys. Yeah. We shouldn't have any wild animals. We no. shouldn't have any lizards. We shouldn't have snakes. So why do you want? Why do you? Why the fuck do you even want a snake or a lizard? I'm pro house? lizard. Man, that's some kink shit. What do you, you got? This motherfucker I'm grabs pro, them. Do you got I'm one? Pro lizard. I, if I find them, <laughs> I'm pro lizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't fuck think we that. should like Except Kamala Harris, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of lizard, man. <laughs> I'm not saying we smash <laughs> chameleons on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'm just saying they're we shouldn't own they're iguanas. Dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, oh, dude, iguanas fuck people up, though. I know. That's what I'm saying. Bite. <laughs> not me. Some bitch. Iguana <laughs> <laughs> fuck a bitch up, dude. <laughs> I've never been one. attacked by anyone. Dude, think about Steve Irwin. That was his whole career, man. And he's dead. Yeah. yeah. But Stingray. He's Doesn't the best matter. dude. Uh, a wild animal. Yeah. Shit, he's he's the best wild animal guy we got, and he's dead. Yeah, Everybody dude. has an off day, man. You know, even <laughs> even Michael Jordan had a. Had I have a 100% success rate of not getting attacked by bears. You know why? <laughs> I've never been to where bears are. Damn it. I went to Smokies once, and I camped. And over, I was a kid, and overnight, they sh- the bear, you know, they were like, hide your trash. So we're in this camper where we took the trash in, mm-hmm. and overnight they're like shaking our camper oh trying to get in. And I was like, "Hey, man, this is not a fun trip anymore, dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to survive. I can survive at my house. They're not getting through a locked door. They can break into my camper, so I'm not ever coming back to the Smokies again. You see how that works? I, I don't want any bears near me. That sounds like a white trash fairy tale. You know, that's like the wolf oh, blowing no. the pig. If you get towel killed down. in Gatlinburg, you're going straight to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> that is the exact way to transition. Into. My man was doing what a normal white guy does. He was in Gatlinburg in the Smokies trying to be one with nature. <laughs> my man gets a pass. He's in. Oh, yeah. So you don't fuck with Tiger King then? <laughs> He's got his shirt on. I mean, I'll watch it. Yeah, this is made from that zoo in Oklahoma. Damn, that's cool, man. Uh, I love Tiger King. I mean, he's a lunatic. Yeah. But free him. Free him. Free him. <laughs> nah, he's a pretty free Carol Baskin because of that bitch Carol Baskin. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm not saying she's any better, well, but bad my man was a bad dude. Yeah, I mean, but he was a... I mean, it's the greatest reality show we've ever you know, had right? in the history of mankind. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe it was real when it and came it, out. And it hit at the perfect time in COVID when all we could do was watch TV. Yes. Yep. Oh, my gosh, man. This is a true this story. Is, I, I watched the Tiger Tiger King documentary, uh-huh. and I, I COVID just happened. I was a senior in high school, 
And so we didn't go back to school. This came out, and I wa- I had an air. Ma- I was sleeping on an air mattress in my room at the time, and I got a big ass two liter Sprite and dumped half of it out, and then poured a whole bottle of Ed Hardy wine into it, <laughs> and I drank it while watching this. And I pissed one. everywhere. Damn. What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even understand what happened. I thought podcasts were about sharing experiences. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Is this Wait. not a judgment-free zone? <laughs> Where did you get Ed Hardy one? Right. <laughs> it was it was in the fridge. And <laughs> well, I mean, how to get to your fridge? <laughs> no, I don't. Who know. sells he, Ed Hardy one? Right. Ross, dress for less. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got a golf, a polo for $20, some dark chocolate, and some Ed Hardy wine. Yeah. I got it. It right. had one of those orange, like, rectangular stickers on it. It said eight ninety nine. Oh, man. And it's pro- so it's probably, in, and it's somebody bought it as a Christmas gift for my grandma, and she don't drink. So it had probably been in there for, like, four years. It was oh, a nice yeah. aged Ooh. red. I don't know why you guys are fucking <laughs> hating on me. For Ed Hardy. Nice but aged. you poured that with what? Sprite. You mixed it? I, I didn't know what I was doing, man. Wow. Yeah, we and then I that, just but... pissed everywhere. Damn. But air mattress is a good, good bed to piss on if you're going to... Did you oh, throw you... it away or wash no, it? No, man, that's an easy clean. Oh, no. Hose? Yeah, what? Well, water. Yeah. So outside, outdoor. Anybody else clean. know you pissed? You cleaned it up real well. No, my ex-girlfriend knew. Mm. Oh, she wasn't there, man. but that she was the reason I had a fucking air mattress in the first place, dude. She gave me bed bugs, had to throw away my mattress. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Classy lady. <laughs> Most dudes dating are like, I don't want herpes. I don't want gonorrhea or syphilis. And we're like, my bitch gave me bed bugs. That's a trashy girl right there. I'd rather her give me a real STD than bed bugs. You know what I mean? For, real, for sure. STD yeah. I can deal with. Mm-hmm. Bed bugs, I got to get a new mattress. Yeah. Oh, that's, you've compromised my life. Yeah. <laughs> I can shave. I can manscape and get rid of some crap. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get a new mattress. I got my mattress like I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start waking up with bites, man. It's a, <laughs> it's a rude awakening, bed dude. Bugs. I hate that shit. <laughs> that girl gave me bed bugs. <laughs> How long did you have it? Have bed bugs? Yeah. Not long. You know, pretty soon after you get them, you check the, you look up a YouTube video. Obviously, do mm. I have bed bugs? Or like, check the lining in the middle of the mattress. Yep. I lifted it up, just hundreds of them. Damn. Had to Dude. bed uh, bug bomb my room. Go and it's COVID. What are you gonna do for twelve hours You're except right. just stand outside and fucking drive around? <laughs> yeah. You know. That's it. Uh, That's good times, it. man. Sounds amazing. Have you seen the new videos where you're supposed to get the, uh, you keep the the sheet on the bed, mm-hmm. and you get the iron. Have you seen this? Mm-hmm. Keep the sheet on the bed. Mm-hmm. You go to a hotel or if any bed you want to check. Keep the sheets on it. Get the iron hot, and then iron the corner of the bed because bed bugs are attracted to heat. That's why they come up when you're sleeping. They come up and bite you because you, your mm. body heat's made it hot. All the piss. So if you iron, 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 iron for like 10 minutes, five minutes, I don't know what it is. Take the bed sheet off. You'll see them on the top of the mattress because they've came. So you can see if you have bed bugs just by ironing the bed. Ah. It's fascinating, and you'll never want to stay in any hotel ever again. Dude, yeah, that's my. That's the biggest fear when I go out and stay in those bed bugs. Yeah, because I don't want to bring that shit back, dude. Because you got to do too much. You have to do way it's too lot, much. Dude. Yeah, to get rid he got of an air bugs. mattress. Yeah. yeah, my back's never been the same. <laughs> it's never been the same. All right, Cassio. Yeah, yeah. This is the end of the podcast. Where we're no going. way. Yes. Let's do what seven more hours. You know what? <laughs> we could go all day with yeah, you. Yeah, we could. Well, this is going to be our first also all guest podcast because we won't be shooting an intro with this nah. one. It'll just Hell be yeah. you. Okay. On here. Is that and good or bad? That's great. Thank you so much Thank for you. uh for this. And anything you got right here in this camera, you're gonna say anything you got come up, this will be out next Monday. Anything you want them to follow? So on uh, so on. When is this out? Next, next Monday. Out. Monday. What's the date? Uh, I got you. What is it? August the eighteenth. Uh okay, coming up I got um twenty eighth and twenty ninth, I believe. Somewhere in that. Look at my social media. Uh, I'll be out with Uncle Laser. Uh, I'll be on the tour. We'll be in hey. St. Louis, and we'll be out in Indianapolis. Um, we've got the finals of the X Five Showcase coming up. Hell yeah! Um, 
podcast every Wednesday at noon for X5. Uh, and all the wrestling stuff is at adfreeshows.com. And I'll take you to our Patreon and get you the uh, the Godfather pod and our two mailbags and any other one-offs I do. Um, that's about it, man. Yeah. For right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. just um, trying to live my best life. I don't have a manual labor job, and that's really my only goal in life. Hell yeah. <laughs> do everything I can. Not Comedy, uh, I'm ordained to do weddings. Uh, I DJed at nightclubs for a while. Licensed realtor. Licensed realtor. <laughs> I literally will do anything but a real job. <laughs> uh, Can you please do Brandon's wedding? Can we reserve right, yeah. you for that? Oh, when hell is that? Yeah. When well, is that? We're planning it out. Should be soon. It's gonna be soon. <laughs> should be soon. It should be soon. I gotta get some money first. As soon as he meets a girl, dude. Oh, I, I just gotta get that money. Gotta get some money. Do you know your budget for your uh, minister yet? <laughs> How much is the minister? I didn't know you got a so you got to pay for. You can get a separate? real one if yeah. you go to church. Oh, you can get that one, or you can pay me. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. How much? What's, what's the ballpark? Wow, we'll figure it oh, out. Okay. Might, <laughs> might cost you that Ace Ventura shirt. Oh fuck yeah, man! We'll yeah, have a spelling bad. bee, and it's more money every word you get wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, and we're start yeah, with BSK. Oh, BSK. <laughs> Thank you, man. Better make some money. Yeah, right. No? You would be too, man. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Not lying. Oh. Dude, we didn't even get to any of this. We didn't get the. Harley. I did work for Little Caesars. It, that was my first job in Los Angeles too. I oh. worked in Gadsden when I was in high school, and then I was like. When I moved to Los Angeles, what can I do? I was like, you know what? I just need money coming in. So I was like the oldest dude at Little Caesars. I was only 23. But, you know, they're in high school, and they're yeah. like, look at this old dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing with your life working at Little Caesars at 23? That's how I feel in comedy now. Oh, my God, we got so many. <laughs> look at this old Buddy, mic. you're telling me. I'll see you all the next open mic. Uh Oh man, we we missed some good stories. Yeah, we missed some. We got, we got some back, good ones though. What if yeah. I come back and hang come again? Back. Can you oh, come back and hang please, again? Man. Oh, yeah, Johnny man. Damon oh, and Lejean Witherspoon from Seven Dust is a great story. Do, do, uh, okay, but save save them. You gonna come back? Filthy Rich Camel Drive. Yeah, we did the Kardashians <laughs> and George Foreman's kids. Woo. What the hell? <laughs> we got a lot to do there. Oh, there is another Matt Mitchell. That's who you thought you booked today. <laughs> is the funny Matt Mitchell. Imagine this. I'm not even the most famous guy in my family and not the most famous Matt Mitchell. Who's the most famous guy in your family? My cousin is Yellow Wolf, a rapper. Oh, shit. I'll be going to his show when he's 3-6 yeah. Mafia Project. Adam Ryan, yeah. Talk. So imagine this. I have did the Tonight Show and everything. I'm like, at least I'm the most famous guy in my family. <laughs> And then my my cousin Yellow Wolf comes on like fuck this guy, man. <laughs> like you're killing me, dude. I'm out on tonight's show, and now you're just gonna blow right past me. You're dirty, dude. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. I love we got bed bug control up on the Google screen. This is amazing. I BBC. love you guys. <laughs> BBC bed, bed bug, bug control. control. <laughs> I'm a BBC expert bed bug Hell control. Yeah. See you next week. There he is. Next week. I don't know what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Yeah.